Sometimes I don't mention certain people's names, but I call it like it is if I like you or not. And if I really don't like you, like the guy with the face paint and shaking the ropes, I, I don't mention his name too much. Um, yeah. But what I'm getting at is that's business, and I respect that. But then they'll ask me, hey, could you go out there with Bret Hart on Raw or a house show and pull 15 with him? Now, that's going to be a better match because I know how to work. Brett knows how to work. We're going to have an unbelievable match. Now, when I go out there with uh, a guy that's, um, you know, he just knows a clothesline and a, and a, and a body slam, I got to work around that and make him look like he can work so he can put asses in the seat. I realize my job. That's why I was picked for it. I'm flattered because a lot of guys can't do that. They won't do it or they can't do it, make the guy look like shit. Then the guy gets, he's green and he gets all pissed, starts yelling him out of ring and people could hear this live at ringside. It's not good. It's not a professional uh, atmosphere. No, not at all. Kevin Rodriguez, he uh, has thrown a comment up saying he's always enjoyed Barry's work uh, and saying it was a great, it's been a great interview so far. Uh, Kevin's a good friend of mine from the Georgia, the United States. Does a show similar to this one, Barry? Um, uh -huh. So, hey Kevin. Also, Knuckles uh, or Hug Hug Knuckles TV. My good friend Hugs. He's saying Barry looked in looking ripped as more ripped than ever. Damn. Oh, so Barry. I, Barry's definitely taking care of himself, man. I'm glad you said that. I got to put myself over for a minute because I, I train my ass off. But when you're wrestling and you're mid card, Pierce, you got to be on time. You can't be worn out for your match. I, and, and nothing against these people, but I can't come in late like Undertaker or Hulk Hogan or uh, these main event guys because they're where they're at and they deserve it. They went to the gym. So I got to get my gym in early. But then when I left the business and I did indies, and right now, like I said, I'm doing personal training. I'm sports nutrition. I do a lot of meet and greets. Um, there's no reason for me to take bumps no more. I'm not going to get hurt. There's no reason... I've already had separated shoulders, broken neck, uh, dealing with a knee injury as we speak. So I live in the gym and see, I'm not taking bumps. I could concentrate. So my training has been better. And at my age and my ailments, I mean, I'm 230 pounds, six foot, 8% body fat. I'm deadlifting. I'm doing everything, but I'm doing it right. Smarter training. And my diet is uh, insane. It's great. I'm, I'm very happy with all my accomplishments, and I'm glad I've picked up a lot from schooling and from being around pros. I mean, I was training when I was wrestling for WWF. I was training at Gold's in Santa Monica. You pick up tips from pros, but I listen and respect. And if the guy's a jack off, I still listen and respect, but I stay away from them next time. You know, I just um, I, I understand certain people. You got to. You got to get worldly. And the wrestling business is almost like an institution or a college, if you will, of, of getting smart in life. I mean, some guys it, it ruins and some guys it smartens up. So, um, yeah, I've been, uh, I've been really, really taking care of myself. And here's my deal. When I come to a meet and greet, this is how I look at it. I treat my gym and the meet and greet and a lot of things in my life like I did wrestling. What do I mean by that? I got to get to the gym. I don't need to be talking or BSing. I need to train hard, get there on time. The meet and greets, I need to be right on that plane at the right time. When I get off that plane, dressed, you know, my dress attire accordingly, my look, my tan. So when these fans see me, they respect me. They go, holy shit. I'm, I'm going to say, if I talk to 10 fans, I swear to you, nine of them go, Barry, you look like you did in the 90s. And I thank them. And I've, since lately, I've changed my look a little bit. I've grown my hair long because I've been keeping it short for 20 years. And I was keeping my beard very thin. So I grew that out. Just a little change up, just like you, tra yeah. you change your training regimens and diet. But the fans are very respectful and they like that. And they like me paying attention to them and meeting them because I'm sincere about it. Because I get, I have a P.O. box and I get at least three to five pieces of, of mail every week that I hand write everybody back every single time they get it within. If it comes Monday, it's in the mailbox Wednesday. It doesn't take long. I hand write it. They want a signature. They want a picture, uh, certain things like that. I treat almost things 
like a shoot, but not over obsessive. Yeah. See, I remember Bob Backlund told me this one time. He says, you know, your training, your matches, you don't want to be too much over, but you don't want to be, oh, I'll eat a hot dog before the match. I don't give a shit. I'm going three minutes. You don't want that. You want to be right in the middle. And if you can retain in the middle, think about having weights or a scale and you got to really work at that to keep it. You don't want it this way. You don't want it that way. You got to keep it just like that. It's hard, but it builds character and it builds enthusiasm. It builds focus. It builds a lot of things that are necessary for life and as an athlete. And that's why I admire people like Tom Brady and Peyton Manning. Yeah, because they can find that balance in order to be a, a, that high-performing athlete that they are, but without going too overboard or being too underwhelming and not taking it seriously. And I think that that's you know the main point. And you look at you know professional wrestlers that are working for either AEW, WWE, um, or any major promotion. You know, to really be seasoned and to be able to do that is to be able to know, you know, when to put your foot on the accelerator, when to ease off, when to put it on the accelerator, or when to ease off. And I think that in wrestling, and and you still see it in a lot of matches today with a lot of the younger talent, is that some of these guys just putting the foot to the metal and just going as hard as you can. And you can, you know, as a fan, and you've always heard these stories of, you know, older generations of wrestlers telling the younger generations of wrestlers to slow down You know, as, well, as a wrestling fan myself. And as I've gotten older and appreciating wrestling, I now understand what that means when I'm watching a wrestling match where it's like, okay, now I can understand why they say slow down in this spot. If you, if you go too fast, the fans miss it. If you go too slow, you got to have a happy medium. That's why my matches were always a little bit of both. You rarely seen me repeat anything. I may do a punch, a headbutt. I may follow it up with a couple of European uppercuts, forearms. But I wasn't I wasn't repetitive. Why? I'm not a limited worker. I may Monday night to Owen Hart. I may do a Northern Light suplex, a black suplex. I may work with him the next night, or maybe I'm working with uh, Brad Armstrong Tuesday night. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna work his leg. I'm gonna leg drag him. I'm gonna hook his leg. I'm gonna try to put him in a submission. I'm gonna try to pin him. See, so I have a plethora of holds, and I like that. That I gr grab grab to that, and gravitated to that because that's what kind. So when people come see me, they go, "This guy's a pro wrestler. This guy is not limited. He's throwing drop kicks. He's doing spots." It's just not punch, kick, punch, kick, and these long, cartoonish, choreographed spots. You smarten up the people. And if you're going to do that, do one. The short, fast ones are better. It's not being lazy. It's being psychology, and it's being smart. There's a difference. Yeah, and understanding on what, what works where and, and how it works as well. So, yeah. But yeah. Let, let, me, let me ask you this, Barry. Like, Intergender wrestling seems to be making a, a pretty big impact on wrestling at the moment. Um, you know, everybody knows my opinions of intergender wrestling, and and I wanted to get your thoughts. Mine, and I'll just let you know where I stand with intergender wrestling is, for me, pro wrestling needs, as a fan, it needs to be believable. I need to be able to escape reality and think this is a legitimate contest. Yeah, I find it hard to see that when I'm seeing a five foot woman at 120 pounds pinning cleanly a six foot six dude at 300 pounds if you can make an intergender match yeah. look, um believable and suspend that disbelief and some people can like lefisto and 